And with 19 goals at home, Port Vale, second highest scorers in the third this term. They really have been finding the net with consistency, but in the first 45 here today, that hasn't been the case. They've been finding it a little, a little bit tougher against a well-organized Brentford defense. And in part, that's certainly down to the return of Terry Evans, who was so sorely missed last week in the defeat against Preston. Terry suspended for that one. Now here's Keith Jones running into the corner flag, looking to... Well, he was certainly playing for the free kick there, the referee having none of it. But I must say, despite the competitive nature of the match, hardly a bad challenge to remark upon in the first half. And most of the free kicks being whistled up to the slight annoyance of the people around me have been for aerial challenges, nudges and pushes of that nature, in fact. Just as we're speaking, the referee obliges and awards one against Ron Futcher in the penalty area for Brentford. A free kick then to be taken by Terry Evans. Keeper to Evans. Great flick on by Gary Blissett and Stowell is just out ahead of the lurking cadet. Those of you who know Griffin Park well, of course, the sun has now set away to my left. So Smelders away at the open-ended terracing has got uh, no problems with the setting sun in his eyes, as keeper Stowell had in the first half. But Brentford didn't really utilise that fact and embarrassed the keeper with um, perhaps one or two aerial crosses or lobs a little nearer the Port Vale bar with the uh, full glare of the sun in his eyes might just have panic the Vale keeper and there's possible panic here with Richard Cadet on the ball now still Cadet oh just take it away from me my last ditch challenge there from Simon Mills we've seen Cadet over the weeks here create all sorts of danger from that position as he goes boring into the opposition's penalty area Defenders have such a job to take the ball away from him and he's also been instrumental in winning a couple of penalties when he's been on the charge like that. Bates misses the challenge. Keith Jones, Gary Blissett, tremendous ball from Andy Feely, the keepers hesitated, now the lob here surely will pay dividends, and it's there, Brentford have taken the lead, tremendous ball from the back by Andy Feely, and Keith Jones was not offside, right in front of the linesman, the keeper came, hesitated, was caught completely in no man's land, he's stranded, Keith Jones, the skipper, scores his second goal of the season, and ten minutes into the second half here at Griffin Park, second place Port Vale are rocked as Brentford take the lead. So Brentford won, Port Vale nil. And everything was on there for the Brentford skipper as he broke from midfield and Andy Feeler's through pass for once reaped the offside trap. And once the keeper had hesitated and gone back, then it was easy for the Brentford man just to lob the keeper into the unguarded and empty net, and that's delighted the home fans here. Now, once again, Brentford have done it in the second half. 55 minutes gone here at Griffin Park. It's Brentford gone Port Vale nil. Now they've got some defending to do. Darren 
Hughes looking for Futcher. The flick on for Futcher will fall to Robbie Earl. Brentford have got to get this one away. And in the end, Gary Ford goes tumbling. And Brentford have a goal kick. team now they're roaring Brentford forward tremendous dummy by Gary Blissett cadet play on says the referee still cadet he's got Webb right on his heels and well that was tenacious stuff from the Port Vale number six because the dummy from Blissett nearly had cadet away but in the end back to keep the smelters And the crowd roaring once again. Brentford win a free kick, this time for the foul on Gary Blissett. But it won't be taken quickly because the referee is going to have words. And in fact, I thought he was calling the um, Port Vale defender towards him, but he's decided, let's get on with things. And there's a buzz about the place now, and the crowd are really humming here. And that's a shame. But Roger Stanislaus wastes the free kick, and Brentford can't keep the impetus going. Stanislaus has a chance to redeem himself. He's on the charge. Port Vale are suddenly looking like an ordinary team. Brentford have the bit between their teeth, no doubt about it. Blissett in field to Andy Sinton, still Andy Sinton. Uh, Richard Cadet had just pulled a little too close to the Brentford number eight. These busy little Brentford forwards. And back come Brentford. Bates gives the ball away. Now one footer on the far side looking to run round Terry Evans. And Futcher goes tumbling, wins a free kick. 22 yards from goal, right on the edge of the Brentford box. Evans seemed to have got the ball away from Futcher, but the veteran number nine just stuck out a long leg and then won the free kick. So Brentford will have to get their wheel right here. Smelders is jumping about on his line like a jack in a box. Darren Hughes to drive one or Gary Ford. Dummit for Ford. Tremendous save, one-handed by Smelders. That could have been the equaliser. Gary Ford's drive is parried by the Brentford keeper. And he's kept his side ahead there with that one. Has had nothing to do in the first half. But that was a flying save by the old keeper. Really tremendous stuff. Gary Ford's strike from the free kick was going in under the Brentford crossbar. Great save. Now here's Richard Cadet. Gary Blissett, still Blissett, runs into the... And the tackles are flying in here now, and the referee was going to have to calm things down here. Gary Blissett and Simon Mills are having a shoving match in front of us. Right in front of the referee is and the linesman. Might be getting chilly here with the onset of winter in West London, but uh, things are beginning to boil up down there on the pitch, I can tell you. Free kick to Port Vale. Andy Feely climbs, gets the ball forward. Gary Blissett assists the clearance up into the centre circle. And here's Richard Cadet, plus it's checked tremendously well to release Kevin Godfrey. Now Kevin Godfrey. Drives the ball against Bob Hazel. Port Vale get it away, but they were stretched at the back there. Cadets tremendous ball releasing Kevin Godfrey. He had another Brentford man alongside him, but he's getting a second chance in a minute. Here's Blissett. And it's wide of the post as the keeper was nowhere. Kevin Godfrey. 
Well, what a great chance to win the affections of the crowd here. The man who's come from Lake Orient on a long contract basis, released by the O's. Nearly creating a second there for Gary Blissett on the six-yard line. And Port Vale lucky to survive there a second goal. The tackles are flying in now. Richard Cadet showing good control to originally trap the ball on his chest from the throw, but then just runs away for a throw on the far side. Here's Port Vale. Now they've got to come from behind as they had to last week against Blackpool. They took the lead up at Bloomfield Road last week and then eventually losing 3-2 for their first away defeat of the season and here at Brentford just seven days later are they heading for their second I wonder in succession well that seemed a fair challenge from this position by Andy Feely on substitute Finney and the referees decided otherwise Keith Millen, Andy Feely has plenty of time now as he crosses the halfway line, Andy Feely making sure, well he delayed and Brentford were determined not to be caught offside, they felt they'd beaten the offside trap, the linesman said otherwise, Richard Cadet just really launching his run a fraction of a second too soon, that was unfortunate, as Andy Feely came chugging out of defence. Well, the Brentford today seems to have found a, a destroyer in midfield. Andy Feely is really unsettling this high-flying Port Vale team. Here's Andy Sinton down here in front of us. The pass forward from Stanislaus is not a good one, but Simon Mills can't afford to just to let it run behind. Gary Ford trying his luck now on this touch line in the second half. Jamie Bates back to the keeper. And Brentford are making a substitution. And it's the debutant, Kevin Godfrey, well, he's had a fine first 70 minutes here at Griffin Park. Deputising for the injured Neil Smiley and the crowd giving the ex-late Laurent man a warm round of applause as he comes off to be substituted by Dean Holdsworth. So that's another tall striker on for a winger. And Brentford commendably are not putting defenders on. And they're going in search of a second. Dean Holdsworth is also here on loan from Watford. And he may get an early chance to shine here. In fact, Blissett hadn't seen him, but Hazel will have to be quick here. There is Holdsworth, who is only inches away from taking advantage of that through ball. Back we come to the other end. Ron Fletcher now will attempt to do something similar. For his team, Gary Thorpe, but Stanislaus is one of the quickest fullbacks in the third division. And he's there to clear his lines. <laughs> Throw into Port Vale, Simon Mills with it. Here's big Bob Hazley. And he plays the ball straight at Roger Stanislaus. Blissett lays back to Stanislaus now. Well, Bob Hazel, he may be getting on in years, but he still had the legs and the speed there to get ahead of Cadet. We haven't seen too much of leading scorer Cadet this afternoon, but you've got to watch this man for the full 90 minutes because he can conjure a goal out of nothing in the twinkling of an eye. Andy Feely has had a fine game today for Brentford Feely. He needs to get the cross in now. Will it reach Sinton? It won't. Robbie Earl. But only get the ball as far as Jamie Bates. Back it comes over Simon Mills' head. 
will look to get it out for a goal kick and does. And I get the impression there are one or two Vale men who really don't relish this game, just looking through their ranks. And this is a time where their skipper Bob Hazel should be clapping the hands and urging his men on. But Brentford have taken this game by the scruff of the neck and they've really never allowed Port Vale to settle. But they have a corner on the far side. Keith Millen. Second corner in a row for the visitors. They're hurrying to get on with things now. Under the bar, Smelders flattered it. Robbie Earl hooks it in. That's the equaliser. It went off the knees of Smelders into the roof of the net. And Port Vale have equalised a scrambled goal from the second corner in succession. And it really came about when the back header, which was looping under that Brentford bar, found Smelders unfortunately stretched, and all he could do was palm the ball. No more than a couple of yards forward to Robbie Earl, and he hooked it in straight back at the keeper, but with enough power to cannon off of Smelder's legs into the roof of that net. And Port Vale have equalised. So that's going to set us up for a grandstand final 15, no doubt about it. It's one apiece here at Griffin Park. Here comes Jones once again, going forward, Keith Jones is tripped by Alan Webb. Bentford, straight on with things. Here's Sinton. And the idea was a good one, but the ball not reaching Perryman, and in turn there's a foul. Keith Jones perhaps just taking out a bit of retribution. Well, that really was a bit of a disaster for Brentford, conceding that goal from the corner. It needed a firm punch from the Smelders. It wasn't forthcoming, and Robbie Earl snaffles an equaliser that, on the balance of the second half, was scarcely deserved. Even of course, just a little dink in with the left foot by Stanislaus nearly gets Cadet in ahead of the keeper, Dean Holdsworth. Now here come Brentford. Caught, there, caught very square at the moment. It's Holdsworth. Holdsworth has scored! A tremendous strike by the substitute with the left foot. A great goal by Dean Holdsworth. The online striker from Watford gets his first goal for the club. And Brentford have regained the lead just three minutes after Robbie Earl's equaliser. Brentford lead by two goals to one. And as Brentford came powering forward there, the Port Vale rear guard looked all over the place. Nobody was picking up Holdsworth. He had Cadet alongside him as well. And from the edge of the area, his left footer left Keeper Stowell stranded. And Brentford regained the lead. Well, let me tell you, Dean Holdsworth, 10 days ago in a reserve fixture here at Griffin Park, scored six in the second half against Enfield. And the crowd won't mind if he ends up with just one today, as long as it proves to be the winner. Now we really have got a game on our hands here. Darren Hughes, he's had a great game today for Port Vale, no doubt about that. But here's Holdsworth, the hero of the moment. Holdsworth turning in field and finding space through the middle for Cadet and Alan Webb is just ahead of the Brentford number nine to get it back to Mike Stahl. But just a moment ago, Stahl was left completely flat-footed on the edge of his six-yard line as the left footer from Holdsworth loot passed him into the corner of the net. And it brought Brentford back into the lead against Port Vale, second in the table here this afternoon at kickoff. Brentford leading by two goals to one. 
No doubt about it, looking at the better side here, but they're going to have to hold out. And certainly they don't want to concede a second soft goal. A tremendous flick by Futcher. Releases Gary Ford. Still Gary Ford. And manager Perryman is back to stamp out the danger. There are 10 minutes remaining here at Griffin Park. Andy Sinton. And the shot's well wide. So just 10 minutes remaining for Brentford to register their first league win. Since the beginning of the month, the free kick, the uh, goal kick from uh, Stowell is dangerously short, straight to Blissett. There's a bad foul on Andy Sinton. That must be a booking for the number two Mills. He was rather lucky not to go into the book earlier on in the half. But nothing's going to save the Port Vale number two this time. A bad body check on Andy Sinton. Nearly all started with the bad goal kick out from Stell. It went low, and no more than 30 yards really straight to Blissett. And as the ball broke to Andy Sinton, the foul from Mills, the body check earns the veil number two, the yellow card. That's the second of the afternoon, one for Andy Feely, and now one on the Port Vale side for Mills. So Brentford with just one point from their last three league fixtures. The last win here was at the beginning of the month against South End. Are they on their way to the welcome three points here this afternoon against Port Vale? They have just seven minutes to hold out as the free kick is touched to Sinton and it scrapes the post. Stahl falling, but I don't think he would have kept it out and just the wrong side of the post from Andy Sinton. Earl Finney, Futcher. The feet were high from Jones, but play on, says the referee. Andy Sinton looking to go the, right, the long way around Mills. Play on. And sub Finney. Ron Futcher with a flick. Keith Jones read the situation well and placed the ball into uh, Keith Millen and Millen on the charge now up supporting the attack. Millen wins a corner. <laughs> this is impressive stuff from Brentford and the home fans are enjoying this. The young defender Keith Millen who Unfortunately, he was sent off on Tuesday night at Chesterfield for a second bookable offence. He's up for the corner. Dean Holdsworth is lurking on the edge of that penalty area. For once, Terry Evans has stayed back. And Roger Stanislaus battling with Finney. And it's back with Steve Perriman. Plays the ball wide to Andy Sinton. Keith Jones. Now the cross comes in. Richard Cadet chests down. Tremendous drive from Blissett, first timer from the number 10 with the right foot just over the bar. Great strike from the big number 10. Now fully recovered from back trouble, which forced him to miss last week's defeat here against Preston. So close to getting on the score sheet there. And twice Brentford in these final 10 minutes, inches away from grabbing a third. That would put the game beyond Port Vale, as it is. They go in search of a second equaliser. Game now being played at a terrific tempo. Cadet is nearly offside, and he is offside. Well, he was aware of the danger, the young Brentford number nine, because he did look up and he checked. And then when he went, I'm afraid he was just beyond Bob Hazel. Brentford lead Port Vale by two goals to one, and this would complete a miserable week for Port Vale if they are unable to get anything out of this fixture. 
Here goes Andy Sinton away from Mills. Andy Sinton to make it three. Sinton wide of the post. Went away on his own. One on one with the keeper. Andy Sinton being selfish, but why not? He scored six times this season. Looked to bury that chance in the far corner. And just unable to hit the target. Still time for them to fashion something here. Gary Ford in a dangerous position. Ford and a second great save in this half from Smelders. From Gary Ford's volley, one-handed gets the ball away for a corner. And it was from the same player that Smelders made a flying save from the free kick. And that would have been a travesty, really, had Port Vale grabbed the second equaliser there. The danger's not over yet. Futter. And that one, I'm afraid, is out of the ground. Retrieved from the back of the terracing. So, Port Vale with perhaps their last golden opportunity to get back on level terms. Flying safe from Smelders and from the corner. Ron Fitcher with his first strike on goal of the afternoon, if my memory serves me correctly, puts the ball high over the Brentford bar. Now Port Vale have given the ball away at the back again, but this time Cadet runs into Bob Hazel. Breaks on the far side for Jamie Bates. Brentford don't want to get caught offside, so Dean, Hol um, Dean Holdsworth will just pull the back off his man. Here's Bates. And through to the keeper. Now biting finish here for the home fans. As Port Vale have a free kick in a dangerous position. One or two whistles from the terracing, but still 90 seconds away from the end of official time by my watch. Terry Evans gets the ball away from Futcher and Brentford have a goal kick. They've done a great defending job at the back. Plenty of pressure and Brentford leading as the referee checks his watch once again. The final whistle can't come quickly enough for the home supporters. The early second half strike from skipper Keith Jones when the keeper hesitated on the through ball was lobbed and the ball bouncing into the empty net and then a tremendous strike from substitute Dean Holdsworth it looks like the three points are going to the home side this afternoon and Brentford will move back up the table and Port Vale are looking at their Second consecutive away defeat, in fact that is the final whistle.